Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you some gameplay of Onimusha Warlords. The game was originally released in 2001 for the PlayStation 2 and it was re-released on Steam on January 15th. This video serves to give you a taste of the gameplay rather than serving as a playthrough. But if you would like to see a playthrough of this game, please let me know in the comment section. the enemy. Taken Lord Suruga's head! I will save Princess Yuki.
Dear Samunosuke, I am writing this letter in the hopes you will read this in time to help. Something is wrong within the Inabayama castle. Some of the maids and servants have gone missing, and I fear that it might be the work of monsters. I am so scared, Samunosuke. People tell me that the monsters eat the maids and servants and then take their remains to someplace deep underground. When I told my brother Yoshitatsu about this, he did not seem interested. He is too busy preparing for his upcoming battle with Nobunaga. Semnosuke, although it has been a few years since we were forced to take separate paths, due to the battle between my father Dosen and my brother Yoshitatsu, you are still the only one that I can rely upon. I can only hope that you receive this letter and that you will find it in your heart to come and save me before it is too late. Yours faithfully, Yuki. Now, just a quick shout out to Capcom. I'm not a fanboy or anything like that, but it has to be said, they know how to set up a story and they know how to produce their cutscenes straight from the get-go. I'm invested in this game. I know it's an old game, but you have to remember, back in 2001, you know, a young Pepe, playing this game for the first time and you're watching that for your opening sequence, you are mega excited to play this game. So, shout out to Capcom. More of this, please. The controls for this game are very basic, but very effective. Even with this game nearly approaching 20 years old, the character movement and the action sequences, you know, meaning the fighting in this game are still better than some of the titles been released in the modern times. Now, I don't know if that is a revamp. Um, I'm, I'm unsure if the controls were this tight in the original release, but all I know is on Onimusha Warlords um, on Steam, the character movement is very, very tight. The footage that you're watching, I'm using an Xbox One controller. So I'm using X as my attack, I'm using B to claim my souls, and right bumper button locks onto the target so you're able to, you know, circle and attack that enemy a lot more effectively. And the left bumper button is to block. You don't really see me blocking that much. I'm more of the, uh, the type of player who likes to dodge, you know, slashing the enemy and then spinning around them at the last second it gets me hit a lot but it's old habits die hard it's just the way i play these games there are a number of different weapons in the game which are linked to your progression um, we'll go into that a little bit later on but each weapon comes with its own special ability and to perform the special ability you're going to be pressing the y button to be able to perform this, this ability, it is totally linked to your energy meter. And to fill your energy, you collect the souls from after you defeat an enemy. Sounds very familiar to another game. To do with souls. And collecting. To become stronger. Just say it. So, as far as the story is concerned, early game, you have to rescue that princess that you have, you know, just let be kidnapped. Worst bodyguard ever. With your current power, you are not capable of destroying our demons. We will give you our powers. We are the clan of Olgus that has been subverted by the demons.
Semenoske, defeat and seal their souls to your right hand. What? Destroy all the demons! So like I mentioned earlier, you have to collect souls to progress. That gauntlet that we have just received, that's how you're going to do it. So when, so when you get to this point, you know, you push and hold the B button after you defeat an enemy and you're going to get that energy, or well, that points, however you want to name it. These shrines serve as your save point throughout the game, but they also serve as where you're going to level up your weapons to progress. So the progression in this game is all linked down to your weapon level. If you reach a certain section of the game and the game deems you not ready to go beyond this point, it will signify this by having like a seal on the door. You'll see it in the gameplay, but each seal has, is a different colour. There is a blue, a red, and you won't see it in this gameplay, but there's a green one as well shout out if it's not green but I know there's there's three different colors so in this footage you will see me acquire another weapon so I will have the blue and the red weapon so if a door has um, a number of red seals on it you know that you have to level up your red weapon to that particular level very simple Open the door! I've killed all the monsters! He killed? Huh? What should we do? <laughs> you! Ah! Sorry. We are very sorry. Please forgive us. What happened to you? They came out of nowhere and attacked us. The keep may have also been attacked by them. Uh, the keep is ahead of us that way? Right. The forest road there is a shortcut to the keep. I see. Now if you play in this game, um, after your first few encounters with the enemies, it will be very easy for you to just look at this game as a hack and slash, kind of arcade style. But you have to remember, you know, this is Capcom, they like a few puzzles, so you will be re retracing your steps throughout this game, you'll have to travel to one part of the map and then have to travel maybe back to a part of the map that you haven't been to in a while. So don't have that gung-ho mentality. I think this game saves it from that using the fixed camera angle. Now some people like it, some people are not a fan of it. For me, it doesn't really matter. When I'm talking about fixed camera angles in the game like Resident Evil, I have no preference. But for this game, the way that it's, um, it has a lot of action, but it is very button bashing, I think this game really um, benefits from having the fixed camera because it still it keeps that horror element, it keeps that anticipation because it's a fixed camera angle 
if it's your first time playing, you're going to be unsure if there's going to be an enemy around the corner. You know, it's going to catch you off guard. I think if this had a sort of an independent camera where you were able to control it, I I don't think this game would have as much charm as it does. I think it would just feel like another sort of Devil May Cry game. Nothing wrong with Devil May Cry games, but I don't like them. I don't like Bayonetta. I might not like them, I know they're good games, but I don't like that style. This is it is still kind of the same game, but the fixed camera angle sort of keeps it grounded in that horror genre. So this book that you're going to see me pick up now is going to help me find some keywords that we're going to use to be able to open some chests later on. So this is another sort of coded box that you will find throughout the game. They're quite simple, but as you'll see a little bit later on, um, I fail quite a few times on another box. It's very simple, all you have to do is to arrange the numbers in sequential order, but you have so many turns to do it in. Very simple, but very frustrating. By the way, you actually need to open that box to be able to progress. So make sure that you pick up that rope ladder. So this is one of those boxes I was speaking about earlier where we need the codes to be able to open it. So you can see that it's asking me to basically translate to be able to put the answer in at the bottom of the screen. So to be able to find out the words and the symbols I need, unless you have the knowledge already, you need to go around and collect these books to find out the translations. If we hadn't picked up that orb a few minutes ago, we wouldn't be able to get through this door. As well as being able to collect the XP that you need to level up your weapons to progress through the levels from the enemies, you also um, replenish your health as well. So the red orbs are your XP and the yellow orbs should be seen as your health. So if you're hitting an enemy and then you see this yellow orb drop, try and make a bit of distance between yourself and the enemy, um, push and hold B and you're going to heal up. The blue orbs replenish your energy attack. So if you want to build up your um, special ability, make sure that you're collecting those blue orbs.
So you can see that this door here has a red seal and we don't have the red weapon yet. That's why I'm unable to be able to get through this door. Huh? Didn't know humans could be such pests? <laughs> Where is the princess? Humans are more tasty when angry, and I haven't eaten in a while. Quiet, monster. It is time for you to go back to the underworld. <laughs> Sweet, beautiful, lovely, the dripping blood, and mm, what's this? Oh, a liver. <laughs> mm? What's that smell? Who's there? A human? How disappointing. Face me, demon. Who do you think you are talking to? I haven't seen one as foolish as you since that, uh, Nobunaga. Nobunaga? <laughs> I operated on and resurrected that pitiful Nobunaga after he was killed in Okihazuma. He then made a pact with the demons and pledged his eternal loyalty to serve us forever as our slave. No! Oh, yes, it is indeed true. Now, let me show you my most recent creation. <laughs> Go, Renato! Fight the belly of that maggot and feast upon his bloody flesh! <laughs> <laughs>
The different weapons that you need to collect are not just served as glorified keys to get through doors, they also give you different fighting abilities. So the blue one is quite a fast, agile um, sort of speed attack, and the red sword that we've just collected is a lot more powerful. So you know, if you want to switch up your attack, you know, you want to deal some quick damage early on and then you want to put a bit of distance between yourself and the enemy, hit that trigger button to switch to the other weapon, you're able to put a lot more damage down. If you've played the game sort of like Yakuza, you'll understand how this system works. So what these enemies do is they actually consume the orbs that are dropped by other enemies throughout the fight and to be able to collect them you need to kill them and then you're able to get the little stash that they've been eating. This enemy type is a lot easier to kill when you get the bow and arrow, which we're going to get in a couple of minutes. As you can see from this door we need to level up our blue orb before we're able to get through here. If you remember from the start of the video, to be able to level up the orbs you need to go to the save point and pick the enchant option. What is going on here? Stop! Who are you? And what do you want with that boy? I should ask you the same thing. You are not working for Saito Clan, are you? Wait. Can you be Samanosuke Akechi? Yes, you are. I cannot believe you are here of all places. I am a servant of the Oda clan. My name is Tokichiro Ginoshita. 
This man will eventually conquer the world under the name Hideyoshi Toyotomi. What is a servant of the Oda clan doing here? Wait, first we must talk business. Tell me, Samonisuke, are you interested in serving our clan? My lord Nobunaga Oda would welcome a great samurai like yourself. I serve no one. My life is mine and mine alone to command. <laughs> I see. However, I will not give up yet. We shall meet again. <laughs> Samanosuke, is there something you wanted to ask this young man? Do not be afraid. No! You want to hurt me like that other samurai did! That is not true. Please, tell me your name. I... I am Yumamaru. Yumamaru, you must tell me. What did that samurai want with you? Um... Why should I know? Fine, then why are you here? Who brought you here? Uh, uh. Go after him while I look for Princess Yuki. I will. Let's all just laugh at how many times I failed to do this puzzle. Thank you. 
So it took me a while to work out how to use the bow and arrow again. I haven't played this game in a couple of weeks. So if you're using an Xbox One pad, you're going to be using the right bumpers to draw the bow and then X to fire the bow. You use the right thumbstick as well to aim. Easy. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel and if you want to catch my live streams, head over to my Twitch channel.